What's up guys? Quick little intro before we get started. This is going to be a full-on build video from frame assembly to electronics to even some software setup in Betaflight, how to get your quad running, uh, receiver with your on Express LRS, and even setting up BL Heli. Not going to go into full detail on like how to tune your rig or any of that, just the simple setup process. If you are interested in how to tune your rig, I do have a video on that, which I'll link right here if that's the right corner. This is probably going to be a long video, so I'll have timestamps to down below. Jumping from the future here, real quick, I just forgot to mention that I'm going to have a parts list down in the description in case you're interested in replicating this build. These are parts that I picked out specifically. And I'm also giving a disclaimer that I am sponsored by Quad Mola. This is the frame I'm going to be using in the video. If you are interested in replicating this build, I will actually have an affiliate link towards that frame in the description. It doesn't cost you anything, it just helps me out a little bit, and I would greatly appreciate it if you check that out. But yeah, that's all I got, and let's get on to the build video. So I'm actually doing Doing this with the GoPro strapped to my head so we'll see how this turns out but yeah this is the whole parts list we're working with I'll go in the def essentially once we work on each one but through the magic of editing let's clear this out all right so starting with the frame I actually did somewhat peel the label off but this is essentially exactly what you get if you first unbox it so some parts I'm not keeping obviously gonna be this little GoPro mount um, the battery pad, I still, Quad Mola did upgrade their battery pads, it is more sticky, but it's still not as good as something like Uma Grip, so I'm gonna toss that in there. Some zip ties, I already got some of those. So what I'm gonna do first is actually take this capacitor and actually keep it, because the one that comes with the Foxier Reaper ESC is a little bit smaller than this one, and I like bigger capacitors, <laughs> you know. JK JK so toss that back in there and let's just organize these parts out of the way and get started on the frame now shall we all right so this frame in particular is the siren f5 mini split which means there's two bottom plates the regular f5 mini non-split this would just be one bottom plate kind of similar to what this looks like so, with getting started, this is upright. This is what your ESC is going to mount to, and this is what goes on the bottom. So, kind of lost track because the GoPro died, but we'll just take it back a little few notches and see where this turns out in editing. But So, you're going to take your little key fob, make sure the countersunk screws are facing upwards. You can't go wrong. It's different on one side. So, that goes on top of here. And then this is your bottom plate, countersunk screws on the bottom. And before we put this on, of course you want to put your arms in first. It's going to be like this. Make sure this longer side is facing the key. And this is the way I like to set up the frame. I know some people will put the screws uh, through these holes first, but I find the stack screws are really long and it just makes everything annoying. So I just kind of line it up like this. And clearly I've already opened it, but you have this one bag called a bottom plate screw pack and you're going to be introduced to two different sizes of uh, countersunk screws. One is longer than the other. The short one you're going to be putting in the inside right here. And let's screw this bad boy in. This, this is how I've always built these frames and this is what works for me. And you don't want to make these too tight yet, obviously. Again, grabbing this shorter countersunk screw. And I hope you guys can see what I'm doing. I tried to mimic it on my phone over here, but it freaking cuts off the display when I start recording on the GoPro. So hopefully the angles are right. You guys can see what I'm doing. And I'm just kind of doing the three finger method, not too tight, but a little snug. You might have to wiggle the arms too because they came out of place. The arms are somewhat installed, but just keep in mind they can still wiggle a little bit. You might have to wiggle them to line these outside holes up because the outside holes are what fully secures these and I'm putting a lot of pressure on. Feel free to. These frames can take an absolute beating. So you're going to take your longer countersunk screw and stick it in this outside hole. And since this is newer carbon, it can be finicky to get things lined up but just keep twisting and praying it goes in 
That's what she said. And this really gives you a freaking wrist workout. But once you start to see the screw poking through, that's a good sign. What you want to do now is take your standoffs. Dump these bad boys out. And for the Siren F5 split, every standoff is the same length. Except for the two of them which go end up going in the front. And we'll cover that later. So grab any of these other ones and just kind of twist it on to that lawn screw you just screwed in and come back to the other side all right so that's one of them i'm going to do the rest off camera now that we have all four standoffs in i like to go back and just make sure these four screws are tight next step is to take your stack screws and what's nice about quad mula frames is that you are able to access these with the frame fully assembled or I should say the bottom assembly or the bottom part fully assembled getting my words mixed up already so since I don't have an electric screwdriver through the magic of editing this will be done in an instant but right now this is gonna be about five minutes probably JK and another thing too these are m2 screws just be careful with these when tightening them they are more susceptible to snapping compared to m3 so kind of just use the three finger method and uh call it a day on that now that we have our stack screws in the next part is to finish off our standoffs and if you come over to the standoff kit you have again one screw is longer than the other well oh, dropping it um, the longer screw is going to go in the front, the shorter one's going to go in the back. And when you're doing the front, and that's what she said, but moving on, um, you need this piece of carbon. It can go any way, doesn't matter. You're going to stick that right there and stick this screw right through it. And then you take your longer standoffs that we put aside, and this goes on top. If I don't push the screw out. Oh, dropping everything. I have a lot of editing to do, guys. I already know. All these bloopers. And don't worry about snugging these in right now. Once we put on the top plate, that's when you're able to do it because it's kind of hard to snug in only one side of a standoff. So yeah, that's basically 90% of the frame assembly right there. Of course, you have your camera plates and your top plate, but saving that for when the build is finished and installing the O3. So the next step would be to start installing the motors. And what we have here is RCM Power's Major Wasp 22.6 by 6.6. .6. Very weird stator size, but essentially it's in between a 2207 and a 2306. Uh, Chris Rosser boasted about these. These came in second place in his motor tests, and I've really wanted to try them out. The reason why I chose these was because of the KV 1860. His uh, first place option, I think, was like 2,000, which is like way too much for the low pitch props I run. But as you can see, if I can unbox this, but I feel like these motors are absolutely gorgeous. They have a gold and gray profile. But yeah, I just love this color scheme. And along with the 3D prints, this quad just looks beautiful. Installing motors, fairly easy. Now, Quad Mola does have this design on their website, or you can buy uh, their kit, which is somewhere around here. And it comes in dark green, but I kind of want to match these motors. So with this kit, you also get um a bag of their infamous metal pieces that like help secure the tpu very innovative i love it but yeah of course it comes with these two longer screws and then they have another bag if i could find it uh they have another bag motor screws which goes on the other one you'll see in a minute but installing motors fairly simple so I was actually reviewing the footage and I completely had the frame like out of view of the camera so I was just talking and basically staring at nothing but anyways installing motors fairly simple you just want to take these metal grommets and uh, I like to use a pair of pliers just to squeeze them in it makes it a lot easier and then uh, with this kit if you buy it from Quadmola 
that comes with these longer countersunk screws and you just essentially slide these into both of there stick it on the arm like that and then screw in a motor how you normally would and use normal motor screws on the two holes that aren't those countersunk so hopefully that made sense um, I'll show you a visual example of like this this fully assembled or all three of these but yeah hopefully that helps and one last thing I forgot to mention when screwing in these two front standoffs there's also a front bumper that goes in uh, since I printed them out myself the clearance is very tight so I like to use some pliers yeah don't be afraid to put too much pressure on doing this if you buy the kit from Quadmola the spacing should be a lot easier it's just I printed these out myself so the clearance is a lot more tighter but I'm gonna take these off and uh, these screws came with it I'm just gonna screw them in pretty simple self-explanatory So, Jevin from the slight future, I do have an extra O3 kit. I don't know how well you can see that for the Siren F5, but um, I already used it on the last build. This is a fully set up uh, quad. Sorry about that. <laughs> this is a fully set up quad. I just took some screws out of it. This is only temporary. I already placed it in order to have the full kit arrive, but I'm kind of in a rush to get this video out. I would like it out on Saturday, so. When I install these screws, just pretend I have four of them. There's only gonna be two in the case of this video, but uh, yeah, let's get to installing the O3. So once you unbox the O3, I actually did this off camera, but typical DJI unboxing. But this side is actually the top. It's actually flat. And we're gonna, the way that we're gonna install this is we're gonna flip it and have it mounted upside down essentially. And the camera, you just have to make sure that the DJI logo is facing upright. That way it's not upside down as well. So what we're going to do is flip this bad boy over, take this little sticker off, and we're going to grab a Phillips screwdriver and take out all four of these screws. So we shall do that now. All right, now in the process, once you take all those out, you might as well just take off the antenna so it's easier to put it in the mount. Speaking of the mount, this is a custom 3D print I found online. I will link it in the description. It's specifically catered towards the O3 on this frame. But first of all, we need to trim back some of these some of this plastic piece. Now, this is a little sketchy, but there is some. Uh, it's not very tight on both of these antennas, so let's grab the right tool. Um, if you kind of just put it in place side by side. It's probably best to just uh, start cutting right here. So I'm just gonna gently apply pressure in a circle format. And yeah, this is always very, uh, gets the nerves going. That's the best way to put it. Cause, um, and through the magic of editing, we shall fast forward through this, but just take your time with this, no rush. There is a lot of slack. And once you finally like nick through the plastic, you can just kind of bend it off like this. Just be very careful. Like I said, take your time with this step. Alright, now that that's disconnected, you can just kind of run these up the middle. And uh, make sure the bottom blade is in between the two wires, that way you don't nick them. And this is actually fairly easy and satisfying. It looks good. And now that that's off, we'll just check up here. I'm mainly looking right here, making sure there's no nicked wires. If that happens, your video can just cut out in the middle of flying. Ask me how I know. But looks good to me. So, fairly simple. We're just going to slide, the, or actually, not fairly simple. From what I remember, you want to do one antenna at a time and get this bad boy in it's always this part is always tedious let's grab our little tweezers so we're back finally get found the tweezers so we're just gonna slowly gently not get this bad boy out of here there's one there we go 
Now, before you push this thing in, you want to, I don't know how well the camera can see this, but there's a DJI logo. You want to make sure that's upside down. This just aligns with the air unit when we fully install it, but once you got it aligned up, go ahead and give it some uh, pressure. And voila. Now, there is one more thing which I'll get into later when I install this onto the frame, but I don't want to do that yet because we still have a receiver antenna to mount. So I'm just going to put this to the side, uh, the receiver antenna. So we're going to actually install this first. And through my case, you're going to need the longer antenna. And we'll worry about the receiver later. We just need to do this step first. Now, this piece is also available online. I'll have it linked in the description, but essentially it holds a 4 or 2.4 gigahertz antenna. And this is a real pain in the ass to uh, get in. So uh, expect the fast forwarding to commence now. And feel free to really open this thing up. like. It's a real pain. Yeah, I'm putting a lot of pressure on. You got one side and this side is almost there. You can see my fingers are sweating from this. So with the help of pliers, it looks like we finally got it. Jeez, freaking sweating out here. I don't know if you can see my palms, but yeah, that's fun. Let me tell you. So let's slide this bad boy down first. All right, now we're just going to set that off to the side. And now for the air unit. Like I said before, this is the top, but we're going to be flipping this upside down. And before we do that, actually, I keep getting ahead of myself. Let's get the antenna installed on here first. So with that, with the antenna installed, you want to go ahead and grab this piece and put this back on and do not screw in the screws just yet because basically what we're doing or the way quad mola intended this to be is that you screw it in through the frame but yeah this part could be a little bit tricky just want to turn this make sure this piece is aligned and we're going to set it down just like this now with our o3 kit that comes with this remember i've already used two of the screws from my other drone this is just pretending like I have all four. If you order this, you will get all four, obviously. Well, there's actually five. They give you an extra one, that'd be nice. But anyways, um, as you can see, these are longer screws compared to what DJI includes in their regular air unit. And that's how the clearance can fit through the frame. So uh, it's best to like pinch it with your index finger and thumb, just like this on the side, just to keep that plate from not falling. You're gonna set this on the back of here. Bring it over, make sure it's aligned with these holes on the very outside edge. Now you're gonna take one of these longer screws and I'm just gonna lift it up just a little bit. There we go. And instead of a Phillips this time, we're using an M2 screwdriver. And it slots in just like that. And of course, don't fully tighten this down. One, because it's M2 screws, and two, you still gotta rotate the air unit. Just pretend there's four screws in here, but our air unit is secured. Let's first of all tuck in this receiver, make sure that's pointed in this direction. Now we can install this antenna, make sure these wires are facing forward. And since this is new TPU, it's gonna take some pressure. There we go. And that slides down perfectly, so voila. Now, as I'm cleaning up these uh, parts that quad mola has for their air unit and uh the regular screws for their unit just gonna keep this all in one bag i don't use these uh tpu prints i like to still use the carbon ones i don't really have issues with jello that's the whole intention with these um nor do i even plan to like record off of this i still plan to use the action too which i'll get into why later in the video but yep yeah, just a little cleanup now in regards to this antenna I'm actually going to be using a trick by uh, Phantom FPV, which is applying E6000 glue all around this. Um, 
He claims he doesn't have signal issues or anything, and it adds a whole lot of protection. That way you're not constantly replacing these. So this stuff does get fairly messy, but this is the clear stuff. They also have it in black, but let's just do a little rain around this. And just smother the whole thing. Again, I've flown with antennas covered in this stuff. I haven't had signal issues. Phantom claims to not have it, but this is a really good technique. Shout out to Phantom FPV for introducing this to the FPV community. I don't know if he made it up, but giving credit towards him basically. But as that's drying, let's get into uh, mounting the stack. And what we have here is Fox Ears uh, Reaper F4 you see, and the F722. Uh, 20 by 20 mini stack but oh yeah this is already getting messy let's clean this up probably not best to use toilet paper but that's all I got deal with it well I forgot what I was talking about because the GoPro I'm recording with right now actually ended up overheating so I think I was on mounting the stacks now these components actually support M3 mounting but these are M2 screws so how do we deal with that well actually Quadmilla introduces this rubber uh, pipe thingy that you use to put on top of these M2s to co convert them into M3 and since I've already done this build before um, what you want to do is cut this for my if you're doing a full m3 stack you want to cut this in a lengths of 1.6 centimeters uh, it's very specific but it's what works so this uh, rdq mat has a little ruler on it and centimeters you probably can't see on this camera but i'm just going to measure these out real quick and just cut that bad boy damn scissors come on there we go. Cuts don't have to be perfect, but just make sure it's 1.6. Now to install these, just gonna like twist them onto the screws until you can't really twist it anymore. So once you have it down a decent amount like that, what you wanna do is take your thumbs, take the fingernails of your thumbs and kind of put them on the outside and just push down. And uh, that's in, and that is actually the perfect length I'm going to do that for the rest of them and I'll be back with you. Now that we have all four of these installed, what's next is to actually unbox the ESC. And this right here is the Foxier Reaper 60 amp 20 by 20 uh, slim edition. The reason why they have a slim edition and they also have a regular one which is a lot fatter. But this frame is just very skinny so the slim edition just fits it. Um, Yes, this basically is a 30 by 30 ESC. It just has 20 by 20 mounting holes. I really wanted something reliable, and I was talking to a lot of guys up in Oregon, like ATEC, Eric, Vanover, and a lot of racers, and they just highly recommended, hey man, just go with Fox here. So that's what I'm doing. And uh, first of all, what we're gonna do is grab some gummies and put them on the bottom. As in these gummies right here. The reason why I'm doing this is because quad mola frames are very slammed. And this is a method I use to uh, create a lot of clearance. Or gummies, I should say O-rings. Looks like this. You can get them on Amazon for like three bucks, I think. Now that we have those O-rings fully pushed down, the next step is to uh, take this, put it off to the side. Open it up here, and we need the gummies. You also get an XT60, which of course we'll need later. And two different forms of gummies. So this place is turning into a mess. But this is what happens when you build quads. Everything gets messy. And a little off topic, but this is the capacitor that comes with the ESC compared to uh, the one that Quad Mola gives you. This is a uh, thousand microfarad, and this one is only 560. I don't think there's too much of a difference, but just to be safe, I like to run this guy. But uh, we'll set those both to the side, get back on topic. All right, so with this ESC, there's two different form of gummies that come with it. You have uh, this longer one and this uh, shorter one. I put the shorter ones in, 
which is which is why I have the O-rings down there to compensate for this guy because if I use this guy to install this ESC, the stack ends up being too high and the battery strap r rubs on it. Ask me how I know, but yeah, I know uh, there's a Tron Cat method of using uh, dental floss to get these gummies in, but I'm just gonna use the old good old tweezer method. Uh, I'll suffer through the pain and probably fast forward through this. So. In essence, you just kind of want to stick your tweezer needles through, pull them back just a little bit to get them to open up, and I hope you guys can see this in the camera. Um, just kind of push them in until you really see the tweezers grabbing. And now that's grabbed, just kind of pull that John right in, and there you go. That's one gummy down, three more to go. Now that we have our gummies in the ESC, next step is to do is obviously plop it down. I like to, this is why I install the air unit first, because I like to run the cable under the ESC. Or actually, first of all, let's mount the capacitor. So this is when we're gonna break out the soldering iron. Uh, Fox Hero ESCs actually have holes in them, so it's actually really nice to stick this capacitor in. Always, always, always try to mount your capacitors directly to the ESC. That's how uh, they're most effective, but of course I get it. If you're short on space, you gotta do what you gotta do, but um, anyways, I like to just stick it through uh, these holes. <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, <laughs> anyway, just kind of nudge that in there until it gets a decent distance away and fold that back and now fold these back just a little bit so you can set this down now we can uh, lower ESC down onto the stack and you can really see how big this thing is just wait till we put the flight controller on top it just it kind of looks hilarious but uh, yeah this is a beefy boy and I really have high hopes for this but uh, let's get to uh, securing this capacitor down. So the soldering iron I use is a TS-100. I always set it to 400 degrees. And wherever my solder is, there it is. Um, this is something I bought on Amazon a couple while back, but it's 40 base lead, 60 base tin, typical FPV solder. So for the capacitor, I'm actually just gonna put a little bit on the XT60 pad. Nothing crazy because I don't have the XT60 installed. We'll add more later, but I'll show you which I'm, what I mean. And another thing too, this is the negative pad. This thing takes forever to finally heat up and the solder to seep in. Come on, I might need flux for that. Let's see if I have better luck on this one. But yeah, like I said, just a little bit of solder. There we go, that's seeping. And yeah, these are big pads, so you really gotta let this sit for a minute. Let's add some flux. Yeah, don't be afraid to let your iron sit, especially on XT60 pads, but that's good for now. Um, I'll add more solder to that when I get the XT60 in, but now what we're gonna do is lift this ESC back up and it is definitely warm. And uh, trim these little pieces of the capacitor off. And try to make them as short as you can, that way it's not grounded to the frame because that would not be a good day, especially on an ESC this expensive. There we go, that should do. And uh, another thing too, this is the front of the, or the back of the ESC obviously, but I have to rotate it 180 degrees because there's no way this could clear in with the air unit. So uh, yeah, we'll plop that boy down. All right, next thing to do is to get the motors all hooked up. But I'm actually gonna Tin the ESC first real quick. And if you've never soldered before, I'd highly, highly recommend getting a practice soldering kit. Amazon has some, or uh, some of the FPB warehouse websites have some. Don't just try it uh, blind blindly on freaking expensive electronics because you probably won't have a good day. Ask me how I know. And I'm trying to hold my breath because don't recommend breathing this shit in. 
Yeah, I'm a little uh, shaky doing this. Too, probably too much caffeine today. But yeah, that's the gist of it. Just lay the tip on the pad, heat it up, and uh, try to touch the solder wire to the tip and the pad at the same time. Beautiful. And some of these need a little bit more solder. And whenever this happens, you have two bubbles that kind of merge into one. You can just take your iron, heat them both up, and slide out. Oh, and in that case, there's too much solder, so I'm going to use this thing. Clean it off, get a clean tip in temp 2. There we go. Alright, and that ESC is hot. Oh yeah. So next part to do is would be to unravel these motor wires and uh, cut them to size. So the magic of editing. I'll be right back. What I like to do before I solder on these motors is get a piece of electrical tape and uh, essentially just hold it down. My desk is a freaking mess. I might just uh, take a breather and clean this up real quick. But I just want to show you guys how we how I like to do this, take the wires, kind of lie them down flat, apply the electrical tape in like the middle of the arm and wrap this baby around. Yep, now that these are good, now we cut them to length. And you're gonna grab these pliers. And how I like to run motor wires into my ESC, I don't like them at an angle like this. I like to have them straight in. If uh, that makes sense. So for this wire, instead of it looking like this, I'm going to have it more curved like that, if that makes sense. And then just cut a little bit in front. And voila. There's one, two, and three. Next, uh, I know you can do this with your fingernails, but I'm very particular and I just like being professional, quote unquote, professional YouTuber out here, JK. Um, gonna use this and just trim it. Is it one or is it point 0.8? Let's find out. Oh yeah, so you use, it's on one for motor wires, in case you didn't know, cause your boy didn't. Alright, now with those uh, trimmed, what you want to do is twist them. This makes the solder flow in easier, and if in the event you have to unsolder these, they're not a mess and they're still like well defined together. Um, can be hard to show this on camera, but just slowly getting these twisted in. And the next step is to uh, pre tin so let's get this fired back up. Alright, now that that's the case, I'm going to go ahead and pre tin these. And with those pre tins I like to just add a little bit of flux to the ESC pads. This just makes it everything seep in a lot easier and look cleaner. Now, uh, you could do this with your fingers, or I recommend tweezers. I kind of do both. Well, let's see, outside to in. And as you can see, I'm mounting this motor wire straight. There's one. Two. And I am very shaky because of the freaking coffee. Probably looks like I'm going insane. Sorry, guys. There we go. So I'm going to do the rest of these off camera and uh, probably replace this electrical tape and make this look a lot cleaner. But until then, I'll be right back. Now that we have the motors fully soldered up, uh, I'm always terrible at lengthening the cable. So some like seem to be looser than others, but I think it's a decent job. Can't complain. A test to make sure that these pads aren't bridged is actually spin the motor. And if it feels very tight, 
um, you know that means one of these pads is bridged or the motor's defective it could be that had a case once it's very rare but um, yeah as long as I spin normally um, and they're all soldered up you should be good to go so the next step is installing the XT60 and honestly you think bigger pad bigger wire it must be easier right but I always find this part to be the hardest anyways let's get into it plug our iron back in as you can see I've done a really great job of cleaning up and what we're gonna do is flux the shit out of this pad and prepare to add a lot of solder once this thing heats up so yeah I'm on the negative terminal right now and this one tends to take longer to heat up because it's got a lot of uh, pathways throughout the uh, ESC to travel to the heat to travel to so just let it sit on there it'll slowly seep in and that's good next the positive pad which isn't as long there we go this one could use a little bit more solder actually perfect all right now we got to trim this out to spec and the way I like to run this is out the front side kind of like this so we're going to have to strategically uh, cut this but let's get these good that looks good so I'm just going to slowly make a marking voila and line this back up positive being here negative about there All right, I don't have any wire trimmers, so what I like to do is just take these cutters and slowly, gently apply pressure around in a circle. I know you can use your fingernail, but... That'll do. Again, like the motors, twist these up. And you're going to want to tin these with a decent bit amount of solder. I'm actually going to use this ESC pad. Just make sure to check the other side and really seep all the way in. Again, make sure you use a lot of solder on, on the easy cut. Not too much, but I mean, you get what I mean. That should be good. And as always, flux, 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 especially with these big pads. It'll save your life, trust me, with solder. I had some on here, actually. I don't think the GoPro's picking it up, but you can like hear it sizzling when you're melting it. It's neat. So let's do the negative wire first, because this one's more of a pain. I'm gonna flip the quad around this way. And definitely want to use tweezers on this, because this stuff gets hot. Or actually, I'm gonna use pliers if I can find them. There they are, in my messy ass desk. You really have to let this uh, sit on there for a second because this pad takes a minute to heat up. There we go. That's always satisfying when you get that. And the next one, and don't be afraid to like really heat up your ESC. Of course, don't don't uh, overdo it like always, but these things are made to take a beating. And I really hope this GoPro showing like what I'm doing. Just really letting this uh, soldering iron sit on this pad for a minute until I see it all melt together there we go and that looks good now's the part we uh, get onto the flight controller now this is also a Fox here uh, flight controller f722 v4 with the MPU 6000 gyro and uh, look how tiny this thing is compared to the ESC like it's a joke dude I, I love it but uh, for this one, we're going to be using the longer gummies that came with it. And uh, same process as before. Use the tweezers and uh, just pull them in. Okay, now that we have our gummies installed, just look for this arrow. And since my ESC is backwards and the cable that this is the only cable that comes with it, I'm only forced to turn my flight controller around backwards. So we can always adjust that in beta flight. But uh, yeah check that out 30 
pretty much a 30 by 30 ESC with a 20 by 20 flight controller. I don't know why, it's just hilarious to me. No, for this specific flight controller, unfortunately, there's no uh, easy plug and play for the air unit or any digital system. So we are going to be soldering onto, I do not know if this GoPro can see it, but we are going to be soldering onto UART, uh, UART 5 for the video system. And then on the bottom for the receiver, we're going to have to go to UART 2 right in this area. We're going to have to take the 3 antenna off again in order to access these wires. And since I'm running my own receiver, I don't need these two end wires. So I'm just going to cut these off. And I'm going to save these wires actually for uh, wiring my receiver on later because Happy Model doesn't give you uh, many extra wires. I said wires a lot, didn't I? All right, now that that's out of the way, we can go ahead and just plug this back into the air unit. And bring this forward and just cut it at like the very end. So let's go with RX-5, very tiny solder pads. Do not need to hold your wire down or your tip on this too much long. And uh, TX-5, which is right here. This can be very intimidating if, uh, if, you for, if it's your first time. Like I said again, please, please, please practice on a practice solder board before you do anything, especially working with something this small. So for power and ground, it's actually going to be under this uh, ESC plug. We're going to be soldering to these two pads right there. Let's do our ground or our voltage first. And then our ground. Oof, tiny, tiny, tiny. So let's quickly strip these and tin them. We're gonna take this white RX wire and solder it to the flight controller of the TX port. And as you can see, very, very light touch and it's already in because this is so small. Now let's take our gray TX wire and solder this onto the RX flight controller port. And done with that. We're gonna take our power and ground, measure these out and give it some slack when cutting. You don't really want anything tight when it comes to flying these. And I'll just match the length on the ground cable. Go ahead and strip these. Give it a little twist. These wires, it's not too important to twist since they're so small, but better to be safe than sorry. And then tin these. All right, now this is probably one of the harder parts because these solder pads are so close to each other but let me make sure we're doing this right okay so the flight controller voltage goes to this outside pad and then the ground goes towards the inside let's do this voltage or positive first there we go that looks Beautiful. So for the receiver, I'm running the Happy Model EP1. All of this from here on out is just very tiny uh, solder pads. What more could you ask for? Let's get these guys pre-tinned. Best to like lean it up against something just because it's so tiny and it's easy to push. Now those two wires that we ended up saving earlier are coming into use. So I'm going to trim these as best I can down the middle. All right, now let's wire this up on the f on the receiver. And I'm very sorry, but this stuff is just super, super tiny. So I'm not sure on how well you guys can see what I'm doing. All right, now that these wires are on, before we go mounting 
anything or soldering this up to the flight controller. This right here, I downloaded this off of Thingiverse and essentially you just slide the receiver in here with all these wires. And this is how I mount my receivers for all my quads. And it can be a bit tough to push in. Just kind of wiggle it a little bit. Feel free to apply some pressure. Just remember what you're working with. Very small electronics. There we go. So as you can see, there's a little indent for the antenna to stick on. You have these wires out and then it just mounts to uh, your standoff. It's very uh, neat. I always loved using this. And now, we gotta take our flight controller, turn it over again, and look for TX and RX2. It's always a little tricky, especially when things are upside down. So let's get our ground. This is our five volt. So this is our TX, and we are going to route this to the RX on the flight controller. And this is our RX, so we are going to mount this to our TX on the flight controller. And uh, take two. Our receiver has power, flight controller and our O3. So the reason why you didn't hear those other uh, beeps at the end of this is because this uh, has to be re reprogrammed in Betaflight. Once I get that all set up, uh, you'll hear the full uh, boot sequence, but we are good to go, guys. That is the full setup. We are pretty much done. Just gotta do some cable management. So I ended up uh, tucking this receiver in, twisting the wires. Now what's left to do is to get this O3 air unit antenna back on. A little bit of pressure. There we go. A lot of wiring. It's just how it has to be. Now we are gonna grab our camera plates and the screws from the O3. Oh, the screws are in the camera, go figure. <laughs> so let's remove all four of these. Only going to end up using two of them. And as for mounting, this uh, right here is going to go on the left side because it's kind of, think about it, but like a right side smiley face or a smiley face. You always want it to be focused like this. And then the fatter piece is on top. Um, and it's all indented right here on the newer quad mola frames just to fit this camera specifically. So what I like to do is grab, oh yes, and make sure that the DJI logo is facing upwards or the cable is on the bottom, that way your camera is orientated properly. But let's take one of these camera screws and we're gonna put it in this middle hole right there. Grab our uh, M2 screw, screwdriver I should say, and screw this into the top hole of the O3 camera. And no, don't make it too tight, but just enough to make it like snug. And same exact thing for the other side. And now, since that is snug, this will just clip into this bottom piece of the frame, just like that, finally. So yeah, as you can see, everything is very tightly packed, but we all fit it in this frame. Next thing, let's get our top plate and some, Uma grip and conveniently I already have a size perfectly cut out. Make sure you put your battery pad on the top of the frame with these uh, concave or can't even remember the name with these concave screw holes. So I always look for uh, this second uh, big hole right here and I take this pad and I put it about halfway in between there and make sure it's rounded up to the other side and apply pressure. And voila, there's our battery pad. Now what's next is to zip tie this XT60 to the standoff and trim off the end of it. Next we're going to take these uh, green standoff mounts that Quad Mola supplies and simply just set them on top of the flight controller. And these are actually very nice because you don't have to worry about stripping M2 nuts. And they've, they hold it down fairly well. Like I haven't had issues with it in the past. And voila, I was actually thinking I should probably print these, some of these out on my own just to match the color scheme, but that's something for off camera Jevin to deal with. Um, next thing, final thing, 
I should mention too that Claude Mola actually upgraded their battery straps as of recently. They're uh, a lot better than what they used to be, but I like to just set these on here before screwing in the top plate with uh, this orientation in the middle and then opposite orientation over the air unit. Then we can just put down our top plate, make sure no wires are getting pinched and with the uh, screw kit that they supply, you have two different types of screws. One's longer, one's shorter. The shorter, one, the four short ones go in the back. The four longer ones go in the front with the TPU mount. And speaking of the TPU mount, we have uh, this custom DJI Action 2 I printed out. Um, I'll have a link to this down in the description, but essentially you just take these grommets, stack them in just like the bumper and the arm guards. Um, I like this mount because you can actually slide an ND filter in right here. And pretty simple, self-explanatory, put long screws in grommets and screw this bad boy down. And if you never handled TPU much, don't be afraid to just bend it, that way you can align this screw in. Just gonna neaten these uh, battery straps real quick. And one last thing, just come back to the bottom and make sure that these bottom screws are all tight. Especially these arm ones right here. And voila, ladies and gentlemen, she is done. If you uh, replicated this build, congratulations. You are pretty much done with the hardest part, I would say. Now you just gotta deal with the tedious software part. But for props, I like to run, uh, this is the completed build I did before this, obviously. Um, I like to run Genpan 3S. These uh, gray propellers just really match the profile and it's gold and black, I don't know, it's just, I love it. But same exact build as uh, the one we just did, replicated. But yeah, let's get to uh, the software aspect of this. I'll see you there. First things first, we need to open up Betaflight. And you gotta be prompted with all these errors and warnings, just ignore it. And the first thing we're gonna check is that we're on the latest release of Betaflight. This current firmware is 4.4.0. I believe the latest one is 4.4.2. So let's head over to our CLI and type in diff all, D-I-F-F -F space A-L-L. -L. And we're gonna save this to file. And I'm just gonna save it to the desktop, make it easier. Call this like uh, just one, I don't know, something simple. Save, and now we need to pay attention to our flight controller. Our flight, our current flight controller is the Foxier F722 V4. So let's head back to setup, let it restart, and click this right here, activate bootloader. And now let's go to firmware flasher, uh, make sure it's on release as the board, look for Foxier. F722 v4 and 4.4.2 is the latest released. Uh, come over here and click load firmware online and flash firmware. And obviously make sure to not unplug your drone because you could possibly brick your flight controller. And uh, Texas's power grid is kind of a, has a reputation I should say. So hope it doesn't go out right now. Yeah, we are good. So just come up here and click connect. Always apply custom defaults when updating. And all right, let's go over to the ports tab. So we soldered the video system to UART5. So we're going to click this. And since it's HD, we're going to come over to this drop down and click on VTX MSP plus display port. And as for our receiver, we connected it to UART2 and we were just going to click that and save and reboot. I'm actually going to calibrate the accelerometer so we can do a further step. Let me just move the quad real quick. Obviously make sure it's on a flat area. That's calibrated. So let's go, I'm just gonna go from top to bottom in order. So turn off barometer, I don't know why you need that. And change arming to 180, that way no matter what angle it is, you can always arm the quad. Um, I always just like turn off all these warnings. I don't know why, even though I don't have a beeper and these are useless, but, and now that's done. We have all this. So 
Let's save and reboot first of all. It may seem that I'm rushing through this. I'm just trying to keep this video overall short as I'm already currently editing it and we're almost at the hour mark. So uh, just bear with me on that. Sorry, uh, I'm trying to go in depth as much as possible. But continuing on, the reason why we calibrated the accelerometers because right now I'm gonna tilt the quad forward and notice how it's tilting back. So the ex activating the accelerometer just kind of helps you tune this. So let's go back to configuration. What you do is you flip the gyro 180 degrees. In this case, it'd be clockwise 90. I know that was kind of a mouthful, especially if you're like new to this hobby, but if your flight controller is rotated 180 degrees, change this to 90 degrees, save and reboot. And now if you come to setup and you tilt your quad forward, it goes forward. If you tilt it right, it goes right, left, roll, left, roll, right. We were good with that. So now we're gonna come down to motors. We're gonna change this to D-Shot 600, enable bi-directional D-Shot, agree with that, and set this to motor direction as reversed. And now you need a battery. Oh, let's save and reboot first. There's the full beeps. Well, let's reorder the motors so I understand. And now um, this is very simple if you're just looking at it in real life. So this motor is spinning, uh, this one is spinning, this one is spinning, and this one is spinning, save that. And come back to motors, and now we need to do motor direction, and this is gonna spin all four of your motors, and you need them to follow these arrows right here. So you need, basically you need them to be swinging in towards your stack, if that makes sense. So I'm gonna start and spin all these. And all of these motors are actually good, but if you find one that isn't spinning in this correct direction, um, say it's one, for example, you would just click one and it's gonna reverse it the other way. But in my case, this way is actually perfect. So close out of that and our motor orientation is done. Uh, Jim from the future here, just forgot one little thing is what you wanna do is come over to the receipt report. And uh, I like to change these values from 1050 to 1010. And then this from 1900 and then 1990, this just gives you a little bit more stick travel. And then let's go over into the modes tab and set up our arm switch. So for ELRS, it's always aux one. And let's find turtle mode or on here, it's labeled flip over after crash, add that. I always do like 1900 to 2100. And for me, this would be aux four and let's save that. And one last thing, let's, uh, I always just disable the accelerometer because I never use it and it frees up some of the CPU usage on the flight controller. But yeah. So as for presets, I'll just apply one. And what I like to do is, uh, 1000, I like to run a packet rate of 1000 Hertz. This is for express LRS. I'm going to pick that save and reboot. And then let's come back down to PID tuning. And while we're here in this menu, I actually like to come over to dynamic idle and set this value to 30. This all depends on how steeply pitched your props are. I run a very low pitch prop, so I would set this to 30. 25 for a moderately pitched prop and 20 for a high pitch prop. Honestly, if you're unsure of which value you should use for the props you run, I would just set this to 25 and that'll just be fine for you. But in my case, I run three degrees, which is very low and 30 works really well with that. So and let's put in our rates. So I run actual rates with the roll and pitch at 70 center and then 50 for yaw. And then max rate is 900 and then 700 for yaw. And then an expo of 0.27 for roll and pitch. And then for yaw, it's 0.21. And save that. Again, like I said in the beginning of the video, I'm not going to go through PIDs nor uh, filter settings. So I already made a video, separate video on that. Um, but yeah, in terms of beta flight, this thing is fully set up except for OSD. Uh, we'll set that to HD. And yeah, yada, yada, yada. That's good. I'll run through this real quick battery current draw i like to have it up in this corner um current mah have it up in this corner and then let's see this probably isn't the perfect spots because i don't have the goggles with me but um just pretend like this is where they should belong and let's go down to rssi which is your control link signal we'll put that right here there we go that's in the middle and put our warning like right there 
So that's basically all I like to run. Let's just save that. And now our OSD is finished and everything to do with Betaflight is covered. So let's move on to BL Heli. So after you're done with Betaflight, make sure to unplug your quad and then plug it back in. That way it doesn't interfere with uh, BL Heli and make sure to have Betaflight closed as well. So what you're gonna do is plug in your quad first and then plug the battery in. And then uh, detected it at COM3, so what we're going to do is click Read Setup. All right, and in this case, in case you didn't know, this is a software for your ESC. Um, this isn't too important, but it's just best to make sure everything's configured, blah, blah, blah. And uh, let's make sure we're on the latest release, which we are, 32.9, as of the time of this video. Um, let's run through some of the settings I like to do. For motor timing, I set this to auto. And PWM frequency, I like to, oh wow, it can go down to 16. It can go up to 128 as well. Damn. All right, Fox here. But uh, anyway, I just like to run these at uh, 24 kilohertz, low and high. And let's change this value to 1010 and this value to 1990. That's good. So let's click right setup. And if you want to see a more in depth video of why I choose these settings. I will have it all of the timestamp up above. But yeah, moving on from that, we are good to go. So let's disconnect. And we can unplug our battery. And now let's move on to setting up our receiver. So again, let's unplug our flight controller and plug it back in. And in my case, I am using Express LRS. So let's open up the LRS configurator. And Although the latest release is 3.3, uh, for some reason I can't directly to it, so I have to choose 3.2. And we are on Happy Model 2.4 gigahertz, and we are using the EP1. So this model, we're going to use beta. You didn't see that. We're going to come down here to manual zero detection, COM3, and let's flash. And of course there's an error, so let's try to figure this shit out because there's always issues with fix express lrs updating i'm just gonna click flash again and see what happens oh wait i know the problem i have to plug in a battery because the play controller isn't powering the receiver the dirt the and let's click flash now this should work and it is not so let's do version 3.0 flash and when you see these percentages climbing up that's a good sign that this is actually going to work and that's Express RS for you. You get to like select certain versions until it works. And then once one of those versions work, you can update to the latest one. And no, that's a mouthful. It's very weird, but um, yeah, that's Express RS for you. Yay, success. And now let's go to 3.2 because this is what my module is updated to. I'm honestly even deciding to include this in the video because I probably just made this very, very confusing, but... That's working with Express RS for you. It's never, it's never, it never has to be simple, guys. But basically update to an older firmware when you first get one, and then you can update to the newest one. And there we go. Now our receiver is up to date. We finished Betaflight, and we finished BLL. -E. And finally, the last thing to do is to activate our O3 air unit. And there's uh, many different DJI assistants. This, if you guys have already dealt with O3, you're probably nodding your head yes in agreement because you've had to deal with this before, but in case you're new like I was, there is many different DJI assistants. You need the DJI Assistant 2 Customer Drone Series to update the O3 unit. Not the FPB and not the regular I know it has to be confusing. I don't know why DJI does this shit, but Make sure you get customer drone series. And what's nice about the O3 compared to the Vista is that you do not need to plug your battery in your quad to power it. You can just power it off a of USB this time. So finding the port right now, plugging in. And it does this weird boot up sequence where the light slightly turns on, then it shuts off, then it turns on and gets brighter. And that's when your computer will detect it. Okay, using a different USB plug because this one decided to disconnect. Let's continue on. And we are going to upgrade to the latest release, so let's click that and start update. And while updating your O3, it is once it gets to this stage right here, about 84%, 87%, it's going to constantly make the sound of plugging in and unplugging. This is completely normal. As you can see, the update is completed. And we are done with that. Just going to do a quick little test. Let's go ahead and plug this in. Oh. 
And in the process, let's go ahead and bind these goggles to the quad. Just using a pair of ply or tweezers. There we go. Let's double check to make sure we have video. And looks good. Now let's see if the quad arms. That looks good. Check out turtle mode. That's good. So without the battery, camera, and props, we are sitting at a weight of 365, 64 grams. Now let's add the camera with a clear ND filter, the battery, and four props. This is very messy with an all-up weight of 621 grams. Not too bad. If you have made it to this point of the video, I just wanted to say thank you very much for watching the entire thing. Or if you just skipped over here and now you're seeing this, thank you anyways. Basically what's left now is to just take the rig outside and give it a little test flight, which I'll have footage right after this. But consider subscribing to uh, boost my ego. <clears throat> I mean, it really helps the channel out. And also giving this video a like, yada yada yada, typical YouTuber crap. But in terms of algorithm, it really just helps it out. But anyways, I'm done talking. Let's get to to, uh, the test flight and I'll see you there. First off, I just like to have the battery facing backwards and making the XT60 long enough so that way these can actually reach each other. Looking like that. So the first step we're going to do is see if I can get this camera panned over to the quad and you guys are able to see my radio at the same time. Best recommended to stand away when you're doing this but for the purposes of filming and YouTube gonna arm it before you even take off or anything just push forward a little bit make sure the quad oh I need to tighten down these props and now with the props tightens let's do this one more time see if I can get the quad and controller in the same frame so like again we're gonna arm it and without touching the throttle we're just gonna push up and it went forward now let's go left now it went left, so that looks good. Now well, the only thing left to do is fly it. Super, super high right now. Ooh, she fast. I'm gonna land at about 23 volts, that way the neighbors don't get too annoyed at me. It is about 8 o'clock right now. And this is legit the first time I am flying this rig and I am very impressed. Especially flying 03. I gotta tweak some camera settings because it's not too bright on my end, but this looks very, very clear. Take it in for a landing. Very nice.